Hey guys, Sam from Manfus Makes. How are you all? Welcome back to all my returners and hi to any newbies. It is so great to have you here. Please do stick around a while. And if you like what you see, give me a thummy. They are free. So you have popped on on a Friday. And here on a Friday, I go through all the crochet that I have managed to get done in the last week. So I have for you today three FOs, I think, and two whips. So we're going to go through the whips first and then we're going to get to the FOs. So the first project, I showed it last week. I am making the apron. That is a tutorial on Cinnamon Stitches channel. I am having a whale of a time. I am using my 5.5 millimeter dots in this lovely lilac-y lavender shade. And when we met last week, I still had one ball of the pink and purple color to put in. And then I explained that I was gonna use a contrasting color for the straps, the trim and the pockets. Well, I managed to get the third ball of the pink and purple in. Okay. So where that green stitch marker is, was where I was last time. And I have managed to, oh, wrong way. I have managed to get from there all the way up to here. So the main body of my apron is done and now I need to think about putting on the straps, the trim and the pocket. I might even do two pockets, I don't know. So there we have it, progress has been made. It's only a small bit of progress, but it's progress nonetheless. Wonderful tutorial from Jennifer Cinnamon Stitches. I will link both Jennifer's channel and the uh, tutorial video down in my description box because as you know it is one of my 24 goals for 2024 to always have a cinnamon stitches pattern on my hooks um, so I can confirm that that is the three what was it raspberry sprinkle ABC yarn diddy donuts this was from the Knitting Network here in the UK. And all I had less left, guys, was this itty bitty piece. And that was not going to get me more than about three stitches. So I am super proud that the three balls of the Raspberry Sprinkle has gone in. Um, just give you some stats. It is a four weight, although it's a really thick healthy four weight uh, recommend a 5.5 to a six millimeter needle there is no hook recommendation uh, wash up to 30 degrees celsius in the washing machine do not iron do not tumble do not bleach uh, made in turkey they are 100 gram donuts and there are approximately 116 meters or 127 yards per donut and like i said i've got the three of them in there and eagerly awaiting is the blackberry sprinkle to go in for the straps, the trim and the pocket. So I will be cracking those donuts open, hopefully in the next week to come, to add that onto my apron and get closer to a finish. Better put my hook back or I'll forget which one I'm using. So yes body of the apron complete so there we have it there is that work in progress now the next work in progress is i have done a few more of the six inch hexagons that i am making for nhap here in the uk needles hooks angels and premies um, they wanted six inch hexagons um, to be made and sent to headquarters and at headquarters they will stitch the um, seven colours of hexagons together to make a rainbow blanket and then that rainbow blanket will be gifted to parents who have welcomed into the world a rainbow baby and a rainbow baby is a baby born after a loss. 
so I managed another three red hexagons this week. Not very many um, because I had the builders come in and do a, a revamp of the bathroom, which was quite chaotic. Um, I have also been working with um, a very good friend of mine on her yarn inventory and I've managed to get that completed and sent to her and all done and dusted. Remember guys, a little while ago I said that I am more than happy to make a spreadsheet of your yarn inventory obviously for a fee. I cannot provide that service for free, it is an awful lot of work um, but we can discuss that. Um, and I have had two of my wonderful Yarny friends on these here streets ask me to do it for them and they are both well happy with the spreadsheets I have given them and they now have a document where they can um, either delete yarn that they've used up or they can add yarn that they've purchased so it's a working document forevermore which they can tinker about with and add to and take away as and when they need so I've been doing that the bathroom's been done and also uh, this week I had um, some shifts at work whereas the week before I had the week off. So not as much crochet this week but still plenty to show you and talk about. So yes, three more of the red hexagons. My uh, ring light is blowing that out massively. It is more of a fire engine red than the orangey whoa that it's showing in the camera and there is one two and three so i am slowly making progress on those like i said whenever i have a quick 20 minutes here quick 20 minutes there i'm trying to knock out a hexagon or three in this case so that is my second whip i will be working on those i still haven't managed to get to my local yarn store to get a skein of purple but the next time I'm in town, I will do that. So then I can do all seven colours that they are asking for, which are yellow, orange, red, pink, green, blue and purple. Um, and as soon as I have got all of those colours made up, I will package them up and send them on for a very worthy cause. So there we have it. That's my whips to show you today. I did also do tile of the week, which you would have seen yesterday. If you haven't seen yesterday's video, please do go back and take a look. Um, it was the three quarters of the way mark yesterday with tile 75. So I did manage to get that done as well. Um, and I have put a row or two on my um, Yarny Fairy Godmother Memento blanket. That is not a pattern. That is not a pattern. Um, it was yarn gifted to me by my Yarny Fairy Godmother and I decided to use it to make a blanket to um, have as a memory of the wonderful lady that she is and some of the yarn that she gifted to me as a personal blanket. But because it is so big and cumbersome and a couple of rows isn't that much progress, I am waiting until I have another little chunk of a few rows before I bring it back and show you. But I did put another couple of rows on that one. So I am trying to work on that when I can. Now for the FOs. So you may know that I am doing the Tunisian Tuesdays with Lenan over at Nina's Not For Crochet. Yeah. I always worry that I get her channel name wrong. Nina's Not For Crochet. Uh, this is the third stitch that we have attempted this week. I will link Lenan's channel and that tutorial down below as well. I have made it pretty clear that Tunisian isn't something that I particularly enjoy, isn't something that I wish to pursue long term, but it is one of my 24 goals for 2024 to revisit it and to try and ignite a love for it. Lenan's tutorials are absolutely amazing so if you have not yet done Tunisian um, and you want to give it a go for the first time you will definitely be able to do it following Lenan's uh, fabulous tutorials or if you haven't done it for a while and you need a refresher again good source for that um, and even if you absolutely love Tunisian and you already know the stitches it is always worth um, supporting a yarny friend of ours 
Um, and it's not just the Tunisian that Lenan's doing. She is doing everything from yarn hauls, finished objects, whips. Um, just an absolutely lovely all-round channel. She does mainly crochet. She absolutely loves Tunisian crochet as well. Um, she is dabbling in a little bit of knitting as well, which is quite interesting to watch because I don't enjoy doing it, but I appreciate those that do. And I feel that Tunisian might be the same. I don't enjoy it, but I appreciate those that do. Um, but I'm going to stick with it. I think I've got something in my hair. It's really annoying me. Who knows? No, I might have got it. Um, yes, so... I have been following along with that. Now, next week, she is saying that the three stitches we have learned so far, we are going to combine together and make a poncho. Lenan, I know you're watching. I cannot commit to a poncho right now. I have a lot going on in my private life, and um, I it's just not the right time for me to do a wearable in Tunisian right now. But obviously, if you do other stitches for Tunisian I will definitely make a washcloth out of those because what I've been doing is making washcloths practicing these stitches guys um the first week was the simple stitch second week was the Tunisian knit stitch and this week is the pearl stitch so are you ready to see my pearl stitch now I think I have done one of my edges wrong and I'll explain that in a minute and I also found that trying to keep my tension even on this stitch was quite difficult. But, again, I don't think I did too bad for a first attempt. Is it perfect? No. Did I mess up one of the edges? Yes. Is it the be-all and end-all? No. It's a cloth to go in my cleaning cupboard where the other two have gone, you know, to use around the house for various things. So it's absolutely okay, but... Like I said, Lenan just makes it so easy to understand what it is you're supposed to be doing that within literally that first walkthrough with her, I was going. So for this one, I chose a peaches and cream stripey. It is in the colour green stripes. It is a medium number four, made in China from 100% cotton. They recommend a 4.5 millimetre knitting needle or a 5 millimetre crochet hook. I used my 6 um, Tunisian hook because Lenan recommends that you go up a couple of sizes um, to try and prevent the curling. And actually, on this washcloth, I don't have any curling. I think the pearl stitch is um, a little bit easier on the curling. Um, you do not bleach, you do not iron, and I think it's cool wash and cool tumble dry. So this is the peaches and cream stripey in green stripes. And this is green, it's just a very yellowy green. Okay, so as you can see, I've used a big old chunk out of the middle there, but I could probably get another one of these out of it if I wanted to. And here it is yes indeed am i showing you the right side see i'm trying to it looks very similar on both sides so i do believe this is the front the the right side the front there we go and then this is the back and actually i really like the back as well there we go and what I mean by messing up one of my sides, this side is absolutely fine. Need to work on my tension still a little bit because it's still a little bit wibbly wobbly, but much better than it has been on the other two um, washcloths. But this side, I was still doing a purl through the two loops on the edge. And if you notice up here, I stopped doing that and just did a normal edge stitch and it's much better. So, as you can see, I needed to have done this the whole way and I would have had a nice straight edged cloth. But like I said, that's okay. It doesn't really matter. I'm just going to be using it for odd jobs around the house. Um, normally, with harsh breaks within colour, that really bugs me. But again, because it's a washcloth, it really doesn't 
bother me in this situation it is a really nice texture very drapey very very drapey um and yeah so again Nanan, did i do okay teacher <laughs> she said i did real good last week so i'm hoping so and i hope that by me attempting it um and me trying to support this endeavor of yours that um it encourages others to have a go because it is always good to try new things guys even if it is not an instant i love it i'm obsessed i'm addicted the fact that you can say you've tried it is awesome and it is just nice sometimes to have something completely different to be doing with your hands so yeah there is my tunisian pearl stitch cleaning cloth so that is my first fo like i said go and check out all the channel links down below check out the tutorials that i'm listing because you may just be tempted to try it yourself okay now the next fo was a bit of a spur of the moment thing really i have been joining in uh, crafty moo sarah's hashtag moose flower power cow since she began and it dawned on me this week that i still hadn't made january's entry and i thought oh my goodness mumpha you better get a move on so i did so i did a little bit of scrolling on um the top of youtube i just typed in um crochet plant items and this sweet little thing came up. Now for this one, I used my four millimeter dots, like the aquary turquoisey color one. And I stumbled across a tutorial um, by Knitting Love. It's not knitting, it is crochet. It's just her channel is called Knitting Love. And I'm just straightening it out for you and I'm trying not to give you a sneak peek. So just bear with me a second, guys. And I'm going to get it all straightened out for you. Obviously, Moo will put this in her slideshow when she does um, the end of the month of what people entered. Um, and I have already sent my email to Moo. So we are all good on that front. And I stumbled across it and I thought, I absolutely love this. I've got to make one so I did make one and it is gonna hang in my window after I have revealed it to you all okay are we ready are we ready this loop here at the top is my creation all she does is have you tie the knot I just did the extra loop for hanging but here it comes guys it's a little plant hanger look at that isn't it cute and you could make the pot whatever color you wanted to suit your decor you could um, adjust the pattern to make it bigger or smaller you could use thicker or thinner yarns to make it bigger or smaller but I just love the simplicity the cuteness and it's a plant that's going to live in my house that i'm not going to kill it's not going to die within minutes of it being here so that's a bonus as well and i just absolutely love it it's kind of um similar to those um macrame ones that people were all raging about back along but this is all crochet guys i will link the tutorial that i followed for this one down below and like i said i believe it's knitting love but it is super simple easy peasy and a really quick make i managed to make this in a couple of hours and the uh the bit that took the longest time are the leaf the strings of the leaves so yeah i am well chuffed with this and i may even be tempted to make a couple more to hang them around the house because they are just super cute so if you've got a couple of hours and you want a cute little hanging plant that you don't have to water you don't have to maintain and you don't have to look after then this is definitely for you so yeah hashtag moose flower power cow for january tick 
done and dusted. So that is my next, or that was that FO. So I will link Moo down below, of course. And if you don't know my Moo, you are truly missing out on an absolute treasure. She is one of my wonderful Yarny friends, as is the other ladies that I have mentioned as well. Um, Moo shows her FOs, her whips, her hauls. Um, yeah, she is just an all-round sweet, lovely, supportive lady, and she really does a lot within this community. So go and check Moo out if you're not familiar with Moo. Now, I have left the piece de resistance. For the very end i have one more finished object for you now you kind of met him last week i am talking about colin the gnome that i freehanded totally freehanded i have not followed a pattern for any of it but like i explained last week um once you've been doing amigurumi for a while you kind of pick up the basics and you're able to understand how these basic shapes are built made constructed so you are pretty much at free will to be able to make whatever you want so colin is completely free-handed okay colin is a little bit of a risque piece to show so if you are easily offended if you are sensitive to adult themes it is probably time for you to click off and i will see you in tomorrow's video and there is no judgment no hard feelings i don't want anyone to feel uncomfortable on my channel if however you like a little bit of cheeky a little bit of naughty a little bit of rude then colin will be right up your street now the story behind colin briefly it was at my live i had um lala mad mimi's crochet and farming in chat i also had nova gnome in chat nova gnome creations they are both fabulous women as well. They have amazing channels as well. They have so much good content. I couldn't even begin to list it all. So like I said, every channel that I've listed, if you could please just click on it and check them out and spread the Yarny love, I would truly appreciate it. And also, Lala is technically my YouTube auntie because my YouTube mum is Jan, the Alaskan crafter and laura lala is jan's sister not in real life but they love each other like sisters um so therefore lala is my auntie so she double dog dared nova gnome creations to do a rudy gnome um and it kind of escalated and then the idea of it being for gnome of the month which is a monthly segment over on nova's channel um and because she was double dog dared nova graciously and in good humor took that double dog dare by the short and curlies yes that was a deliberate pun um and ran with it and she is having a rudy gnome gnome of the month for january on her channel now this is my entry into gnome of the month there are no prizes or anything like that it is just to be supportive and have a load of fun um so yeah i decided to join in but colin is not going to stay with me colin is actually going to go and live with auntie lala so i have customized colin to be more to lala's taste so let's stop the yibber yabber in and i really don't want to spoil the surprise of this one and let's get talking about the bits and pieces that i need to talk to you about so i used various cottons for colin i am getting them out of the bag now so bear with me just a second okay so pale pink Hobie uh, 88 rainbow cotton. I used a full one, so that will go into my yarn bands. And I used a little bit of this one, about half of this one. I used a darker shade of the Hobie rainbow cotton. Um, did I end up using this? 
no i did not use the white i was going to use the white for the beard but i changed tactics so that was not included i then used a little bit of orange this is the shepherd's callista in a lovely orange tone this is all 100 percent cotton guys for his beard i plucked off of my shelf from my stash oh and all of my fo's can count towards stash down 2024 and stash before cash and i forgot to mention that the plant hanger for moose flower power cow were just scraps of my three weight dk acrylic from my scrap bin back to colin colin's gnome at uh, colin's gnome colin's beard i pulled this off of my shelf from my stash it is the hobie fluffy day xl 100% premium brushed acrylic so it is already quite fuzzy and soft but basically I cut bits out of this and I knotted them onto Colin and then I brushed the yarn out and can I just tell you that his beard was an absolute labour of love it took hours of my life to make his beard but it is worth it because his beard is oh so beautiful so yes, and I used it in this creamy colour. And as you can see, I've got plenty left, so it's going to go back on the shelf. Um, and then, so to use, to brush out the yarn for his beard, I used this pet comb that I got off of Amazon. I think it was about £5 money-wise. So I don't know, what's that, about $7, something like that. Works really, really well. I have shown it on the channel before. I will briefly show it to you. And I'm opening it one-handed because I've got Colin in my other hand. And it's one of these. And yes, it's pink because my name's Mantha and my favourite colour is pink. So you brush, brush, brush. And then when your bristles are all clogged up with fur, you just push this button on the back. And it goes in and you can pull all that fuzz off. And as you can see, I've still got some yarn fuzz on there. So really, really nice little hack little trick and i learned that from nova gnome i believe as well and there are extra decorative items that i have put on colin's hat which are very personal to auntie lala so auntie lala if you are watching you now have a decision to make you can either stay to the end of the video where i reveal colin and you know exactly what he looks like and exactly what to expect. Or you can click off and you can save it as a surprise for yourself when I eventually send it out. And I'm thinking of sending it around your birthday, which is about May, I believe. So this is for Auntie Lala. If you don't want to know what Colin looks like, bye. I love you. I'll see you in the next one. But if you do want to see what Colin looks like, stay tuned. And I, again, this is the only warning that I'm going to give you. If you do not like adult themes, and in this case, nudity, or you are easily offended, it is also your cue to click off. Because when I show Colin, I cannot unshow Colin. If you have children watching with you, may I suggest that you continue watching this video when children aren't around. And that is literally all I can say because what I'm about to show you, you will not unsee. Okay? <laughs> I love him. I think it's great and I do have a little bit of a naughty sense of humour. So this is right up my alley. But I know it's not for everybody. So I will be showing Colin in in a few seconds so if you do not want to know you need to say goodbye and click off i am not going to be offended in the slightest if you want to see colin then stick around because he is coming in three two one look now you're probably thinking he looks totally innocent and like a normal gnome now his hat detail i actually bought these from amazon they are artificial flowers and they are fabric i thought they were um plastic they're not plastic they are fabric and there are probably about 150 of them in here so auntie lala you may be getting 
calla lilies in every happy mail I send you from now on. Just saying. And if you don't know the story or the meaning behind calla lilies, I think at this point it's a if you know, you know. If you are familiar with Laura's channel and you've been there a while, you will know exactly what the calla lilies are all about. Okay, Lala will know what the calla lilies are all about. And I have literally just stuck three in his little hat there. They aren't glued, they're fully removable. But there are three beautiful white calla lilies adorning his gorgeous orange hat because Auntie Lala's favourite colour is orange. There is his lovely fuzzy beard that I brushed out with the pet comb. He is completely naked. He has got no clothes on. Okay, there's the back of his hat. So, where's the adult theme you're asking? Well, if you just give me a moment to lift up Colin's beard. I'm actually really embarrassed to do this. There's no one else in the room. It's just me and the camera, but I know that I can never take this back off the internet. <laughs> Colin is very happy to meet you all. Are you ready? I told you he was a naughty gnome. I told you he was a naughty gnome. Just once more for those that were so shocked they couldn't believe what they were seeing. Yes, that is exactly what you think it is. And for a gnome, that is that is a very nice um, gnome package. It's the first crocheted peen I have ever done. And it is and it is Colin's. But when he's sat on the shelf, you don't see, you don't see what he's hiding. But if you, if you part the, the beard or lift the beard, you know exactly what he's got under there. But there is my Colin. There is my gorgeous Colin, the naughty gnome as part of Nova Gnomes and Gnome of the Month. So I need to take pictures of Colin. <laughs> which sounds so dodgy, email them to Nova for her to feature on her channel for when Gnome of the Month actually comes out. And I need to keep him safe and probably warm until he gets to Auntie Lala's later in the year. But there, there we go. There is my Colin. And I just made it up completely free-handed by myself. And I am so, so proud of him. But yeah. He's a very, very naughty gnome. Just one quick splash, ready? Woo! Okay, that's enough of that. So there we have it. The secret has been revealed. Colin, the naughty gnome, is going to stay with me for a little bit until I actually send this out to Auntie Lala. But yes, that beard was a labour of love. It really was. Everything else worked up super quick. So there we go. And the calla lilies just as the finishing touch in the bright orange hat. I cannot think of a more suitable gnome to go and live with my Auntie Lala. Now, Auntie Lala, if you did stay, I hope you do love him. You need to be careful what you double dog dare people to do because most of the people come through with their double dog dares. And I decided to join in and support Nova and now you are going to be the proud owner of this naughty, naked gnome called Colin. You're very, very welcome. <laughs> so there we have it, guys. My naughty gnome, my Tunisian dishcloth and my plant hanger were my three FOs. My charity hexagons and the apron, cinnamon stitches apron are my works in progress. I also did tile of the week as well. So not too shabby considering I didn't have as much crochet time and the fact that I did um, the yarn inventory for one of my really, really good friends. So I've got calla lilies galore, guys. I need to think of some good ideas for these. Any suggestions, put them down in the comments. And like I said, if you don't know the reference to the calla lily, it's a if you know, you know. 
Um, for Colin, he was created using my three millimeter dots, which is orange, which color coordinates and is just fabulous. So Auntie Lala, I used your favorite color hook. I used your favorite color on Colin on the only bit of clothing that he has on and I had a lot of fun and it has given me the confidence to maybe freehand a few more bits and pieces literally in the future so there we have it I hope I haven't upset anyone I hope I haven't offended anyone but I did give plenty of warning to click off and finish the video um, before I revealed that last item and I did warn you as well not to watch it in front of children and that's all I can do on this platform guys um, so yeah, I hope you took it in the good humour it was intended with. He was a very fun project to make and um, I'm just really happy that I can support some of my Yarny friends on these YouTube streets and I can take part in such fun crochet alongs because I'm having a ball. I have really tried to make a conscious effort of not putting too much pressure on myself with my crochet that it doesn't always have to be for the channel. It doesn't always have to be everybody's make along because I feel guilty if I don't take part and like I'm too I'm favoring a, a make along over another make along. I am doing what I can when I can. If I've got stuff to show on the channel, brilliant. If I don't, I am not going to stress myself about it because I have um a job outside of the home. I have the four kiddies and Mike, the house, the pets um and obviously this channel to upkeep as well so yeah it's uh it's a lot and i'm not gonna keep apologizing or getting myself stressed and ill um to do all of the things all of the time i'm just trying to take a little bit more of a chill pill and do what i can when i can without any stress so that's where we are guys so tomorrow, join me for a bonus video. I actually filmed that video a couple of weeks ago now. Um, and it was where I was driving home from an appointment that is about two hours away from where I live. Um, and I take you on the M5, which is what we call a motorway and what you guys across the pond call a highway. So if you want to be freaked out driving on the wrong side of the road, you guys across the pond, then please come back for tomorrow's video. Um, and obviously anyone else that wants to watch as well. Um, and also come back tomorrow night because we are going live as usual, 4 p.m. Eastern, straight after Granny D. And it'll be lovely to have you over at our house um, for that wonderful time of the week, the most enjoyable time of the week for me. Um, yeah, so I think that is just about it for today, I think. Um, and stay tuned because next week I will finally be able to reveal the big life-changing thing that is happening for Mamfa. I am finally in a position to be able to tell you. So I don't know what video it's going to be in. So you might want to click on the videos next week to see what the big announcement is. Or I might do a video all, all, all about it. I don't know yet. I haven't thought about next week. So yeah, driving video tomorrow where we just chat as I'm driving along. You can look at the scenery while crocheting on your project and our live 4 p.m. Eastern straight after Granny D. I'm going to let you go, guys. I've kept you for nearly 40 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the things I had to show you today. And like I said, I hope nobody is too upset with Colin because he's a nice guy. He just needs some undercrackers. But then that will defeat the object of the project we had to do anyway i'm waffling i'll see you later thank you so much for coming over and until i see you tomorrow stay safe be kind look after one another get some good quality time in with your loved ones and get some good quality crafting time in i will see you in the next one or around the youtube streets bye guys love you later